Hey everybody, Dr. Rob here, Facebook Live. Sorry a little late, uh, was stuck on a call, uh, had to speak to a few patients. Believe it or not, we were talking to patients about lower back pain and it really got me thinking uh, about what should we talk about today? And we're gonna talk about one of the hidden reasons that most Americans have lower back pain and it's not discussed enough. And unfortunately, it's not discussed enough um, and if, as I've seen before and I, I've discussed with many people, eight out of 10 Americans have lower back pain. So why does it keep occurring? Well, there's a multitude of reasons, but I think this is the hidden reason. I think this is the reason that most people have lower back pain and those who have that lower back pain do not resolve. It's called fascia. Fascia with is the saran wrap of the body. It engulfs the whole body. Um, when you think of fascia, think of the skin being peeled away from a chicken in that attachment of the skin to the meat, that white stuff, that's fascia. Or the white film over a salmon, that's fascia. But when you cut open the salmon and try and eat it, it's inside the muscle. Fascia is an interconnective system. It's very interesting um, in that it's what I call your body's wetsuit or your full body wetsuit. Fascia is living matrix. It's actually connective tissue. It's a sheath in over the body and inside the muscles. It's below the skin and above the muscle. There's actually lymph nodes that live in this fascia. When surgeons used to do surgery, the first thing they remove when they cut you was the fascia. Without fascia, we'd fall apart. It, uh, fascia's tightness, appropriate tightness, leads us to a theme of what we call tensegrity, the ability to hold ourselves tight. If we have uh, loss of fascia or soft fascia, we would fall apart. When we get scar tissue, the bulk of our scar tissue comes in what we call these fascial planes. Um, there's six times the nerve receptors in fascia than any other organ in the body. It's without question a sensory organ. There's actually meridians in fascia. And fascia, the total amount of fascia, actually accounts for 20% of our own body mass. So I got a quick shout out. Hi, Siriwan. How's everything? I'm gonna hit you with a like also. Um, so a lot of people ask me about back pain. As I said earlier, eight out of 10 Americans have lower back pain and they wanna know why it doesn't resolve. Well, there's so many things that you can approach lower back pain with. Uh, lumbar adjustments have been very effective. Chiropractic adjustments without question. Myofascial, hear the word, myofascial muscle and fascial release. Some that come to mind or something like an active release technique. There's instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. What are you really trying to mobilize? Fascia. So techniques like good, my good friend Todd Riddle's factor, Graston, these are instrument assisted that open it up so that myofascial release is a critical element. One little side about that, the original instrument when you used to rub it like this, caused a lot of redness, actually bruised, not big on a bruise because you're causing damage to the area. Actually, you wanna have mechanical vibrations to fascia. Harvard University did a study and showed that if you had mechanical um, vibrations to fascia, you would actually have the fascial loose, loosen. Now, fascia is interesting in that even though it's intertwined with muscle, fascia actually communicates with a different system than the muscle does. So muscle actually is governed by the parasympathetic system, the wine and dine, eat, rest and digest, whereas fascia is governed more by the sympathetic system. So that combination of systems, you have to be able to balance. You can't go to one system or the other system. So some of the other things that I recommend strongly to get rid of fascia would be low-level laser. Everybody knows Arconia low-level laser. I recommend the Arconia violet red laser, which has the combination of lights, enabling you to balance those two systems in the autonomic nervous system, which incorporate the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Flexion distraction is also a great choice in exercise rehab. So let me go into a little bit more detail. I see that we're having a lot of questions. I just can't see them. Can you re read them out to me? Oh, uh, I just saw somebody here. Laura O'Hare Jackson. Okay. Take a look. You'll see. So back pain, fascia. 
Fascia plays a role in pain. It's the interconnective system. It transfers one region to the other. It's actually fascia provides the ability for objects and structures to slide. So without pain, fascia slides 75%. With pain, it slides to 50%. So when fascia gets tight, it doesn't allow the structures in your lower back to slide. So not letting the, those structures slide, that's that tension that you feel. So when people come in with a tight lower back, they're really complaining, not just about the muscle, they're complaining about the fascia. Fascia is enabling the body to be interconnected. It's the only system in the body that connects all the other systems in the body. And when you understand that, it's a interconnected system that allows for communication. So it's an intracellular communicator. Dave D'Angelo, is scraping the same as myofascial release? That's a great question. The, grace, the question was, is scraping the same as myofascial release? So a lot of people using the vernacular, the scraping, which is that instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization, because they're scraping their fingers like this, they're scraping their tissue, their lower back like this. So scraping is a word that is used, kind of hate the word because it's more instrument-assisted. The whole point to it is to allow for that myofascial release, but the key component, once again, into that vibration and rubbing of the fascia, that's a critical element in that it's releasing the fascia tightness in planes. You don't want to bruise it. So all the cupping, now my understanding is that cupping should be drawn over the area and not give the bruise or the hickey. So it's so popular, everybody gets out and, and shows, hey, look, I'm bruising. My question is, what did you just do to the fascia? So this is going to be controversial. I try and stay away from the controversy, but I'm throwing my hat in the ring on this. It's controversial, right? What are you doing to manage and modulate the inflammation? You're trying to bring blood flow, but you're damaging tissue. What are you doing after the damage to the tissue? I don't want to damage the tissue. I want to decrease the damage in the tissue. So back pain, fascia, understand it doesn't allow things to slide. It gets tight. It's not just a muscle. It's myofascial. The fascia plays with that. So what nutrients? We spoke about a whole bunch of uh, modalities that allow you to um, treat the lower back pain. We talked about laser, we talked about adjustment, we talked about the different forms of myofascial release. Of course, acupuncture is a beautiful uh, technique also. Uh, flexion, distraction, decompression. Here's some nutrients for fascial healing. Um, let me um, list the nutrients and let me go into some detail on them. Collagen. I think collagen is a great choice. Collagen one and three is great for skin, hair, and nails. Collagen type two is good for cartilage. Five and 10 is good for tendons. So if you have a good collagen, it's a great choice. Collagen, you can also get collagen in what we call a bone broth. Collagen is very popular. I strongly recommend it. I use it with most of my patients in that I use it in most of my patients to help with the things that we mentioned. And gut, glucosamine and chondroitin, what a great choice. Glucosamine and chondroitin work with fibrocartilage, bioflavonoids, vitamin C, SOD, zinc, hops, magnesium, and sulforaphane. So these are some of the nutrients that I recommend for fascial healing. I'll go through them one more time. Collagen. Glucosamine and chondroitin. By the way, the literature on glucosamine and chondroitin was really robust on the knee, but it's even more researched on lower back disc injuries. There's fascial attachments to the disc. These disc injuries were studied all the way back in 2003 by an objective study using an MRI. That study revealed that the addition of glucosamine, HCL, and chondroitin sulfate with MSM provided a robust amount of decrease in pain in lower back. Bioflavonoids, going to be great to help the tissue heal. Vitamin C, SOD. Zinc is an enzyme that most people don't look to enough. That zinc is a critical element to allow for enzymatic reactions and healing. Hops has shown to help with what we call undenatured collagen type 2. Fascia is a part of that complex. Fascia is actually a part of what we call extracellular matrix. Everything outside the bone, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and muscle, and fascia, we call extracellular matrix. Magnesium. Magnesium is really going to work very positively 
on the muscle. Magnesium is best taken at night. Sulforaphane, sulforaphane allows for membranes that intertwine fascia to heal appropriately. Sulforaphane comes from cruciferous vegetables as we talked about before. And what foods do I recommend with fascia? Let me see, I see Dave's got another question. Don't you need to take the precursors to SOD because SOD is too large of a molecule? Absolutely. I recommend strongly taking all those precursors. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. You, oh, got to give you a like immediately. Got to stop and do that. By the way, everybody, Dave's a good buddy of mine. Does a great job at Purity Coffee. Um, foods. Foods that are going to help heal fascia. Collagen and bone broth, like we mentioned before. Water, of course. What? We should all hydrate with water. We should drink half our body weight with water and add um, eight ounces for every 15 minutes of activity, exercise activity. Omega-3 fatty acids, they're great for cell membrane health. Healthy fats like avocado, coconut, and olive oil. Incidentally, those are the fat fruits. Foods that are high in antioxidants, fruits and vegetables that may contain quercetin, and once again, magnesium before bed. A lot of people ask me, why do I add nutrition to all these different things? Why, can't, is it, why isn't adjustment just enough? Adjustment is great. Why isn't laser just enough? Laser is great. I use it. I use them both together. Decompression and everything. But why nutrition? Well, I'm a big proponent that specific nutrients and oxygen are required to sustain a heavily used muscle or myofascial region. Overuse to soft tissue injuries fascias a soft tissue injury result when the supply of nutrients are unable to match the demands of that myotendinous fascial region. Healthy nutrient supply through diet and supplementation will assist the body with nutrient function and the repair processes. So nutrients, whether you eat them or take them in a supplement form, probably both together are going to enable the healing process to work appropriately. So people say, why nutrients after an injury? Because you need a lot of one particular nutrient. It's how much kale can you truly eat at one time? Now, food, of course, is always your staple, hence the word supplement, supplemental to food. So you're going to get a larger amount. A, a damaged cell or damaged structure cannot replete itself by food alone. Therefore, you're going to need to add some specific supplements. So that brings me to kind of tie it all together. When you have a fascial injury, you should treat the fascia with specific supplements in what I call three phases of care. So you have an initial injury. And that injury, when it's initial, in that first three or four days, we call that the acute phase. That acute phase is a protective phase. That's where inflammation is high. That's when there's redness. That's when it just lifts up. So imagine if you're going in and getting um, treatment and somebody is increasing inflammation. It, it makes no sense. If anything, you want to manage and modulate it at that time. You then flow into or segue into phase two, which is the subacute phase, which is day four through week eight. That's the repair and remodeling phase. You, have, you repair the injury and then you remodel it. Day four, you can conceivably think that scar tissue is being set in. The whole purpose to fascia is you want it perpendicular, not parallel. If it heals parallel, that scar tissue and it's shortened, hence lower back pain. If it's perpendicular, that's a great choice. So it repairs and it remodels. You want fibroblastic proliferation to allow for collagen to lie in a perpendicular, not parallel form. And last, going into what we call phase three, phase three is the wellness or ongoing phase or protective phase. That's typically after week eight. You get an injury to your Achilles tendon, which is a great example of fascia, that will take a longer period of time. Unfortunately, so many people come in in what we call the chronic phase. We used to define a chronic phase that ongoing repair and remodeling uh, lasted for three months or longer. That led us to the idea of that scar tissue was laid down, adhesions, and you had fibrosis. It's kind of hard. You know, palpation is a great way to determine 
where your fascial healing is. If you touch it and it's swollen and it's kind of clumpy and gushy, you know it's early. If you start to feel it and it, it, it feels sort of messy, you know, mesh-like, you know you're in the repair and the remodeling phase. When you get that guitar string or that big thick knot, people say, I've got a knot, I've got a marble there, I've had it for a while, you can flick over it. You're now in that chronic phase. If you're in a protective or wellness phase, you're like, it healed really good. The real question that I was asked people, why do you think you lose flexibility? Part of the reason that you lose flexibility is damage to the fascia, the saran wrap of the body. Anytime you go in for musculoskeletal work, whether it's from massage therapist, PT, acupuncture, chiropractor, osteopath, and the like, you want to hear that they're adhering to fascia because at the end of the day, once more time, fascia has six times of the nerve receptors that any other organ has. So for me, it's my go-to, and I believe it's the hidden gem to lower back pain. All right, I'm sorry for being a little late. All is well. I really appreciated all your time. I look forward to seeing you again. And by the way, I want to give you one little factoid. New article came out on masks and COVID right out of the gate. It was interesting that masks and COVID while exercising. So the suggestion was a cloth mask was the best. The cloth was the best because it didn't get quite as wet as everyone else or all the others. I have that right here. So I just want to share that with you. It should be um, cloth masks, not cotton cloth. And that's your best bet. If you exercise for more than a half hour, switch the cloth. Your regular um, NK95 isn't going to work. Your surgical mask, they get wet really early. Not going to be as effective. Not going to enable you to run. The one thing about the mask is you're going to increase your heart rate about 10 beats. Take that into consideration. Think about the fascia. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Dr. Rob, always yours in health.